Hello YouTube! Today I'm going to show you how to set up your Salix installation with Lux Encryption and LVM. Now, reasons why you may want to do this. Let's say you want to install Salix on your laptop and you use it for, you know, uh, traveling to coffee shops or you're, like, or you're um, very mobile and you want to make sure that your data is secure. Or also, let's say you have a small business and you do a lot of work out of your laptop or your small business. Or let's say, for instance, um, your employer allows you to run Linux and you would like to use uh, Salix. You know, all these are, are pretty good reasons why you want to have encryption on your hard disk. Now, unfortunately, um, unlike Debian or Ubuntu or um, even Anagros, Salix does not um, have a way to encrypt your hard drive um, from the installer, which means that this is all going to be done manually. So I have a set of instructions here that I'm going to post in the description below, as well as some uh, reading resources from the Slackware site. I'm also going to add um, an article from the Gentoo and the ArchWiki on LVM and Lux. Hopefully with all that information you can go about with these instructions and set up your laptop as you wish. Um, the instructions I have are for a pretty basic setup. I'm not going to add any any um, any different features. I'm just going just to do a, a plain Lux encryption on the hard drive and then LVM on top of that and then we'll just go from there. So let's launch our VM. I, unfortunately, I can't make the fonts bigger on the VM through VirtualBox. Uh, let's see if I can. I can try and scale it. Let's see. Oh yes, look at that, making it bigger. All right, so there. So that way you can see what I'm doing. So we're going to do English. Didn't notice it had this feature. So we're going to keep current key map. And then right here, if you want to exit the installation and drop to Linux console, select exit installation. We're going to select exit installation. And let's just clear the screen. And then the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create two partitions. The first one is going to be the boot partition, which is going to hold our initrd file and our kernel. And the second partition is where we're going to put Lux and LVM. So we're going to do using the CF the CF disk utility. We're going to go to Dev SDA. We're going to select our partition type as GPT. We're going to first create the boot, which is going to make it a gig. Select New Size One G. Enter. Then we're going to go down to Free Space. We're going to go to New. Keep that the same. And we should have two Linux file system types. One SDA, one SDA2. We're going to write these out. We're going to type yes. And we're going to quit. And so let's clear. LSBLK. I'm sorry. LSBLK. There we go. So with this done, now what we're going to do is we're going to take the SDA2 partition and we're going to set up Lux encryption. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do crypt. Set up Lux format, and then we're going to point to Dev SD2. Warning: This will overwrite your data irrevocably. Are you sure? You notice how it says type uppercase yes, uppercase yes. Now we're going to do our passphrase, and we are going to let it do its job. And it is right now encrypting and it's done and here's a way you can verify that um, this process worked so uh, blk id is a command to get the blo actual block ids of your hard drive they also tell you um, what types those hard drives those particular partitions are in so if i run blk id and if i look for dev sda2 i have the uuid of the partition and notice the type says crypto underscore lux. So that tells me that that devsda2 
is encrypted with Lux. So now what we want to do is we want to open that encrypted partition. And to do that, let's first clear our screen to get a good view. And we're going to do crypt setup Lux open dev sd2. And then we're going to give it a name. And this name can be anything you want it to be. It's not a big deal. Password. And if we do LSBLK, there we go. So now what we're going to do is we are going to put LVM on top of this. So the first thing we're going to do is do the command PV create. And this is going to create, what this does is this creates a physical volume. And with LVM, what you could do is you can have actually multiple physical volumes or different hard drives, and then you can create them into one group. And then from their group, you can create logical partitions. But for, but for this case, we're just going to create one physical volume, one group, one volume group. And then from that, we're going to create our two logical volumes. So we're going to do PV create, and then we're going to do dev mapper. Name. Be sure we get my old trusty thing, and that's it. And then we should go there, and it's been successfully created. So now we've created a physical volume. Now what we're going to do is, if I had multiple physical volumes, let's say you know I had multiple physical partitions that made physical volumes, what I would do is I would you run the command vg create, and then then the volume name, and then add all my physical volumes. But since there's only one. We're just going to be adding one physical, one physical volume to this volume group. So we're going to do VG create volume group create. We're going to call this Salix, and then we're going to add our physical volumes. In this case, this is going to be one volume group created successfully. And now to verify this, if you run the command VG display, it gives you all the information you need on this volume. This, this indicates to me that the volume group was created successfully. So now with this done, what we're going to do is we're going to create uh, two logical volumes. One is going to be for swap and the other one is going to be for root. So let's do that with LV create. And we're going to make it, I'll make it a gig. The name of it is going to be swap. Then we're going to do identify what group this is from. So it's going to be this Salix group. And I believe that should be it. Yep. That's it. And now what we're going to do is. Let's see, let me get 17 gigs. And we're going to call this root. And part of the Salix group. All right, so now if I, to verify, there's two ways I want to verify this. So you notice how I did VG display? Now I'm going to do LV display. And as you can see, I have two logical volumes. Another way you can also verify that this works successfully is if you do LSBLK. As you can see, I have Salix swap and Salix root. So, so far, um, we have encrypted our partition, and then on top of that, we have added LVM. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to run the GUI installer, go through a normal install process. We're going to install Lila the bootloader and then from there instead of rebooting we're going to drop into the shell and um, do some additional things. So what I'm going to do is since you've already seen how Salix is installed I'm going to stop the video here. I'm going to run through the GUI installer. I'm going to stop at Lilo, res resume the video and then we can proceed. And we're back. There's actually one more step I forgot to do before we run the GUI installer and we want to actually format our drives. That way the installer will automatically recognize them. So what first we're going to do is we're going to format the boot partition, which is the command is MKFS. We're going to make it extended to. 
dev SDA one. Now we're gonna do we're gonna make the swap, and this one we're gonna do dev mapper salix swap. And then we're gonna do the root partition is extended for. All right, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually run through the first half of the installer. That way you can see that the installer actually sees the drives and identifies them as such. And then I'll pause it and finish it on my own and then restore the video after Lilo is done. So let's do setup. And we're going to install. And then welcome to the installer. Let's see. Okay, so usually at least two partitions are needed. On the stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this. Let's do this first. Because first it should recognize that the swap partition. Yes. See, Salix system has detected one or more swap partitions on your system. So we're going to sit and OK. We don't want to make swap because I already have. It's activating the swap partition. All right, so now it's going to ask me what is going to be my root, and that's going to be my root. Uh, do not format it, no, because I, I already have. It seemed to have one more partition type as Linux, so we're going to do, yes, we're going to pick this one. No, because I already formatted it, and it's going to be my slash boot. So... At this point, I have identified this is my root, and I have identified this is my root, so we're going to go over here, and we're going to go continue. And it's going to add those to my Etsy FS tab. And that's it. It's pretty straightforward. Um, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to pause the video, and I'll finish the install. And then once Lilo is installed, I'll stop it, and I'll show you what we need to do next. Okay, we're back, and we're now installing Lilo, so we're going to do the simple install, standard, leave it that as is, install on the master boot record, and right now Lilo is being installed, uh, let's see, once it, let's see, now do, let's see, it's going to create a new account, we're going to call the account Bob. Nice special password. All right, and then we're going to exit user setup. We're going to add our mirror. And notice we dropped to the command line. So now what we need to do is we need to actually create a make a init RD file. And the reason why is explained here. This is a cool tool in Salix. It's actually a little GUI tool that helps you read the man pages. So let's do MK init RD. Right. And really the reason why we need to create an init RD file system is right here. So the user reason to use an init RD is because you need to load kernel modules before mounting the root partition. Usually these modules are required to support the file system used by the root partition extended 3, riser, X, X, XFS, or perhaps the controller or the hard drive is attached to us because you're RAID. Basically what it's saying is is that the um, init RD is, is used to help load certain modules that that is needed so that the kernel can actually move, mount the root file system. Since we're using LVM and Lux, we need to actually load those modules on the init RD that way the kernel will know, hey, the root file system is, not only is it encrypted using Lux, but that it is part of an LVM logical volume and we need to treat those accordingly. So, in order to do that, first we're going to have to do is we're going to have to mount um, the file system we just created. We're going to be chirruting into it, and then once we're chirruted into our installed environment, we'll be running this command. And this command will create the initRD with the right kernel version, um, 
telling it telling the root telling it the root file system is actually in this LVM that's encrypted, and this is the physical drive, and this tash L is identifying that it is LVM. So with that, let us let's be okay. Okay. So what I like to do is I like to make a directory in mount called Salix. And we're gonna first we're gonna mount the boot by the root, which is going to be dev mapper salix root two dot salix. Now we're gonna mount the boot, which is dev sta one. We're gonna just turn this on mk. No, not mk. Swap on. Oh, oh, there it is. Yes, it's already mounted as well. All right. So now we're going to mount the special directories. Mount I used to doing this Gen 2, so sometimes you'll see me type accidentally mount Gen 2 instead of mount Salix. With that done, we're going to root into our environment. Now, if any of you are familiar with installing Gentoo, you'll see that some of these instructions are from the Gentoo handbook. You don't have to do all the stuff I'm doing, but it's just for me, since I've installed Gentoo a lot, it's just habits. Alright, so now what we're going to do is we need to find out what kernel version we're running. So let's do a uname, tacr. So 4.4. .4. So 4, 4, 14. So what we're going to do now is we're going to run the command mk and then rd tack c tack k. And if you actually read the man page on making an rd, it'll actually let you know what all these flags are. Four. Right. Let's see. M and then. Next. So, okay, no kernel modules found for kernel 4414. Hmm. All right, let's do this. Slap get update. Ah, tack tack update. We may have to upgrade the kernel. Oh, cannot resolve it. Okay, so we're going to do ping verify can ping google 8.8.8.8 8. 
Uh, network is unreachable. If Hmm. Lead CPD to I lead zero. So if hmm. see is it is it up? Oops. So yeah, this is up. Why is this not working? Alright, since so it should be, send the commands to master gates and process center. Okay. Hmm. This is not working. So let me go to my virtual box settings and how do I have the link set up? Ah, you know what? It's set up as that. So what I'm going to do is, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to shut down. Actually, let me first, oh, here, let me exit the truth real quick. Let's see if I can do, before I do this, because I, I may need to change something real quick. There we go. Pingogol.com. Okay, hold on. I know there's an issue with my Wi Fi, so let me just do this real quick. Okay, so now, there we go. This had to do some network magic. Alright, so let me go back into my Chirrut. So I have to update the kernel. Couldn't I resolve the name? CP8.8. CP8.8. Alright, okay, so now I know, I know what I need to do. Nano W, it's C. So cough, there we go. That's why we add Google's menu server. Name. See, this is how you troubleshoot. All right, so there. So now let me update slap get. All right, this is very similar to what happened um, with VirtualBox. Remember how we wanted to install VirtualBox? And we needed um, the latest kernel that was installed um, in the Salix install. So we're probably going to have to do the same thing. So what I'm going to do is slap get and attack i for install. Let's see, kernel headers, and kernel source, and kernel firmware, headers, source, firmware, and huge. Kernel huge. Oh, and then kernel modules. Yes. So. Sometimes things don't always go according to plan, and so you have to roll with it and sometimes a little troubleshooting is evolved but this should work after this upgrade happens I should be able to build my in an RD file upgrade Lilo make sure the Lilo.com file is correct reboot and the kernel should not crash it's going through all right so let's do it still has 4414. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is, I am actually going to have to do a reboot. So, Lilo, attack me. But let me see if I can do 
the init rd first before I reboot. So I think it should now oh, 404.11. So that is what we installed. There we go. Look at that. All right, so what we did was, since I knew that the kernel that we installed was 4.4.11, even though the running kernel was 4.4.14, I, I told make init rd to use kernel 4.4.11. It saw that we'd have those kernel modules installed. It saw, and from there, it created the file. So if we look, if we do an ls slash boot, there it is. Now what we want to do is we want to make verify that our lilo.com file actually sees that and it should be where is our lilo.com? I think it's in Etsy. Yes, so let's let's look at this. Now type W Etsy Lilo.com. Pen boot. Let's see let's do where is kernel? See. Okay, here it is. Let's see. Image, root, label. So what we're going to do is we're going to go here, and we're going to go init rd, and we're going to do init space init rd dot gc. And we're going to save this and just to verify. Yep, init rd gc, init rd gc. And one more time, just to be sure, we're going to do Lilo Tech B. Hmm. No such problem. Oh. It helps if I did this. Put the full, full path in. We wanted to put the full path in. So now. There we go. So, with that done, let's do a reboot. And if we did everything correctly, ah, let's exit out of our chart. Okay. Well, that's all good. Let's see. Did we do it correctly? Decompressing Linux. It's booting the kernel. Enter the passphrase. Everything so far is looking good. Entering multi-user mode. And there you have it, gentlemen. We successfully encrypted our our second partition, created an LVM, carved out two logical partitions, um, made sure that uh, the kernel can can read it, and we're done. Um, if you like this video, please like it, share it, subscribe, and post comments, and once again, thank you for sharing or for watching.